Okay. Show me. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to the Dutch Sheet Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And this is a little bit of a weird start to the video. You were expecting to see uh, maybe a frame kit, the start of a frame, a frame in a bag or box. <laughs> but instead you're seeing a finished quadcopter. Uh, to be honest, I'm mostly showing you this finished quadcopter because it looks a little more interesting than just a bag or a box. However, this, uh, you've seen the title of the video, right? You'll be uh, seeing in this video a review of an Amex frame. And also this is kind of the start of a new build series, I guess. Yeah, so Amex, have you heard of Amex? I have been aware of the brand for about a year, I think. I'm not completely sure. You might be new to the brand though, even though they've been around for a while. You might be familiar with the brand Amex for their motors. Uh, they have been selling frames for a while now as well though, however they are pretty new in that scene. So that in itself makes it interesting right to see if they built nice frames, well thought out uh, frames and high quality frames. And also this, this build will be a little different. I'm not going for lightweight at all. I'm, well, I'm not going for heavyweight. I'm going for crashability, crash resistance. That's the main reason for me uh, choosing this frame. So this Amex frame, uh, as you can tell, I already have one. And this is actually a prototype. I've been testing this prototype for them, this frame prototype. And I've actually used this quadcopter to test several things. Uh, you might remember this quadcopter from my MSR receiver from Diatone. And I've got me some flash hobby motors on this quadcopter to test. However, the build will have Amex motors, of course. Well, of course, it'll have Amex motors. So let's get back to the start. Let's see what you get if you order this here frame. Alrighty, Amex Inno. This is how you get your frame in a paper bag. However, there was a cardboard box around. Uh, yeah, so... Um, this frame, this is a 5 inch frame and they sell uh, several 5 inch frames. Go look it up, I'll have a link to the version I have here in the description down below. It's not an affiliate link, I'm not sponsored by them. And uh, what you'll see is uh, that this is a, a kind of a middle of the road uh, frame. It has, well, middle of the road. It is more beefy than your average 5 inch frame. However, they sell an even beefier version of this frame. Also heavier of course, but it'll have thicker plates, main plates. This one has 6 millimeter arms already. And there's a lighter version, which I might also try. I'm not sure, probably actually, yeah. So have a look at their site, at their offerings. Uh, they have a web shop in China, that's their global uh, shop, I guess. And they have one in Germany, yeah, Europe, obviously, yeah. So that's uh, convenient for me, right? And uh, I'm not sure where these frames are made. I expect them to be made in China. These are, at least some of them are designed in uh, Germany though, yeah. Okay, and what more can I tell you? Yeah, they sell a lot of frames. Go have a look. Okay, I have not opened this one yet. Let's have a look at what we received. Um, and if the prototype was something to go from, you get a lot with these frames. Yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Okay, let me uh, show you things in a log logical order. Here we go. So the carbon center section of the frame, if you will. And as you can tell, some of the bags have labeling on them, which, well, isn't really needed, but it's nice. While I show you this, it might be interesting to tell you what uh, has changed from the prototype to this production version. And it's mainly the, the camera mount. I can see that there's, I'm not sure if you will be able to see that, but there are different slots over here for different camera sizes width and these are the actual camera mounting plates which will slot into these slots and there will yeah this will be hard to see for you but there are slots over here in which these plates will fit so this is a camera mounting method you see often in frames to be completely honest I kind of prefer TPU printed camera mounts 
but from experience, from the prototype, I know that this works. It, uh, I don't see any weird vibrations in the camera view at all. And that might be due to the thick arms as well, of course, though they smother any kind of vibration. Okay, what more can I tell you? Yeah, so this is again the middle of the road version. This has three millimeter plates and there's also one uh, with four millimeter plates. And I guess I'm not completely sure, but the light version will have probably thinner plates. Go look it up. So main center section of the frame. Then we've got uh, arms, again labeled bags and you don't get spare arms, <laughs> but uh, six millimeter arms and I have test crashed that prototype. I haven't been able to, uh, to break an arm. That's not to say that you can't, well it's, <laughs> I can, would almost say that you can't break these arms. These are extremely beefy. Yeah, I've never felt um, stiffer quadcopter arms than these. Six millimeter and I guess the quality of the carbon fiber is uh, good enough at least. In a second of course I'll take everything out of the bags to see if everything is clean and if it was well machined. The prototype was good. Not perfect but I expect this one to be at least better. Then you get two anti-slip battery straps, nothing really special, even though it's got a metal buckle and again anti-skid and you get two straps. You get two general purpose uh, anti-skid pads for your quadcopter and these work out well. I've only used small patches on the prototype which was more than enough. So nice to have two patches of that. You get uh, foam landing feet for your quadcopter, always appreciated. Then this is beyond the norm. I, have I ever seen this in any frame? I don't think so. So wire mesh to protect the wires for your, of your motors and um, shrink tube, clear shrink tube to finish the, the ends off and black and pieces swing tube to finish it off. Uh, depends on uh, what you uh, what you prefer. I've actually used these to mount or to strap the, the wires to the arms like so. I hope you'll be able to see that but uh, a convenient uh, way of uh, mounting or strapping the wires to your arms I think. Yeah I didn't use that, uh, that mesh as you can tell. Maybe I'll use it uh, in, that, uh, in this build. So this is definitely above and beyond. Again, I've never seen this come with any frame. Very nice. Then we've got ourselves a, an elaborate hardware package. Elaborate. So it comes with an XC60 which uh, can actually be mounted, hard mounted to the frame. I'm not sure if you'll, I'll be uh, doing that, but it's an option. It's a nice option, I think. And uh, obviously you've got your standoffs and all kinds of uh, screws, but also stack screws. And not only one type of stack screw, but uh, the 20 by 20, the two millimeter stack screws and three millimeter stack screws. So pretty nice. Right. And uh, let me see. Yeah. You also get a decal, only one decal. Yeah, only one decal. So last thing to check before I go and build this frame is to see if uh, everything is clean or how clean it is, rather, and what the machining uh, was like. So let's take everything out of these bags. As you can uh, hopefully see, uh, the carbon fiber is uh, moderately glossy, definitely not dull or, uh, well, it's, uh, it's glossy <laughs> in case you care. And uh, it's got a nice uh, MX logo on it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, well packaged, well protected for shipping and such. Okay. Let's see if everything is clean. It's cleaner than the prototype. Great. I am very happy to see that because again, the prototype was not squeaky clean. This is, um, huh, okay, immaculate. 
Very, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Much cleaner than the prototype. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, burring. Uh, the, these frame parts are not chamfered, so... Well, actually, they're not, they won't cut you, so maybe there is a, a minute chamfer. But it's really pretty 90 degree angles, uh, if you will. So, you can probably see that in the video, right? Um, however, as I mentioned before, the prototype wasn't perfect. That's uh, usually the case with prototypes, I guess. And this is, uh, well, I was new to uh, this brand, MX, so I didn't know what to expect from the production version, but perfect. No burring at all. Uh, yeah, so, and still pretty clean hands. Yeah, the, the edges, maybe there's a little bit of, still pretty clean hands. Perfect. Yeah. They definitely, um, or maybe I was lucky, this is uh, only the second frame, uh, but this one is perfect, well cut, no issues whatsoever. So what I'll do is I'll go and build this frame and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like. I'll give you my impressions of this build, the production version of this frame, and uh, we'll see what it weighs. And um, yeah, then I'll tell you a little bit about the rest of this project, this build. Okay, let's see what the frame looks like. And there you have it, one finished frame. So how did this frame go together? Pretty straightforward. It is a, and it's not a complicated frame, right? Uh, the tolerances are super duper tight. And uh, yeah, some screws actually took quite a lot of effort to put into the arms, especially. They went in, as you can tell. But uh, the tolerances are, <laughs> there are no tolerances. That makes this frame super duper stiff. Yeah, on most frames there is a, a, maybe a little bit of flex, a minute amount of flex. In this frame there is no flex. <laughs> yeah, at least not when I crank it by hand. I'm not sure if it'll translate into the vi video, but it, there's no movement in this frame whatsoever. I can't bend the arms, there's no play forward and back. And the worst thing about that, <laughs> the worst thing, is that I didn't even use all screws. I'll show you in a minute. But um, it, it, it <laughs> the frame is basically not all put together yet, and it's already as stiff as can be. That's the, the merit, the purpose, uh, for me at least, of this frame. Uh, it should be crash resistant and from the prototype I already know that this makes for a precise flying quadcopter. That makes sense, right? No flex, no play at all. So uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, let me actually take off the top plate so you can uh, see the innards of this frame. About the uh, screws not all being in there yet, you got two holes over here and two holes over there and those run through the arms. Uh, there should be screws running through the entire frame or the, the bottom plates and the arms over there. It is not really necessary I'd say, but I will put them in at the front because uh, you'll be uh, crashing the quadcopter head first and that'll put stress over here I'd say. Again I can't even uh, crank or move anything on the frame yet, but I'll put in the frame uh, the screws over there. At the rear, they might interfere with the battery lead pads on your uh, 4 one ESC. So I'll have to see. Again, I don't really need the frame needs it, but the screws are there, so I'll uh, probably at least put them in at the front. Then these, these are my stick screws for the 30 and a half by 30 and a half uh, full size stacks I'd say and those also run through the arms that's a bit of a negative thing probably so if you want to replace an arm you'll have to take apart your stack and uh, yeah uh, with the six millimeter arms uh, you will be hard pressed to break them but anything can break and I'd say MX would be it would be nice to have a slot in the arms instead of just a, a hole for the screws so you can slightly undo the the bolts at the bottom and then take out your arm right 
That's what it's, uh, what it's done like in a lot of other frames. Then this center section uh, is a two-stage design and it's not the first frame to do that. It is very convenient though, that way you can uh, use all kinds of uh, cameras at the front. And at the center over here you obviously got uh, holes or stack mounts uh, for a 30.5 by 30.5 but also for a 20 by 20 you see the holes probably. Then you see this cavity in the middle and that's probably partly to uh, save a little bit of weight. But you can also place your capacitor underneath your 4-in-1 ESC. To that I should add that this cavity is pretty small, so the, usually the, the, the capacitors I use won't fit in this cavity, but it's nice to, well, that they thought of that, and, but again, I'd like it to be a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, at the rear you also have a 20 by 20 stick mounting position and also 16 by 16 maybe for VTXs or something. And uh, this hole over here, you are actually meant to put your battery leads through that hole so your XT60 will come out the bottom at the rear of your your frame. That is an option, I will probably not be doing it, I'll probably put uh, the battery leads to the side over here, which I usually do, but it's a nice option and you've got holes over here to screw down that XT60. It is definitely an interesting idea, an interesting option, which I hadn't, hadn't seen much or at all. So the last thing I should mention is uh, these slots over here, uh, those can be used for your um, battery strap if you want to mount your uh, battery sideways, toilet tank style. And actually I might, might do so. And that is probably mostly it for the, well, the look and feel of the frame. Let's do some measuring on this frame. All right, here we go. Left to right, motor center to motor center is... 178 millimeters, 178 millimeters. Front to back, motor center to motor center is uh, 135, 135 millimeters and then our wheelbase is 125, right? 125? Yeah. Well, maybe 124. <laughs> yeah, so it's a 5 inch, a typical 5 inch quadcopter in that sense. Then the motor mounting holes, let's have a look at that. Those are 16, also 16. Okay, so you don't have a lot of flexibility in that sense, but it's, well, it, it is what it is. 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter mounting holes. Pretty typical again, but uh, you don't have uh, the flexibility of using other motor sizes. I expect that the lighter version will have uh, other options. And again, maybe I'll get that in as well. That might be a, an interesting, very lightweight frame. And what more can I tell you? Yeah, there's a lot of room underneath the back of your frame over here where you could potentially put your VTX or receiver. There's also, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there's a lot of room in between the frame plates over here. There you can definitely, if you'd want to, slot in your receiver as well, but it is a very roomy frame nonetheless, right? Regardless of that, you can. In the other one, in the prototype, I placed my uh, receiver right behind the FUV camera. More than enough room. So what does this frame weigh? Let's have a looky. So in case you were expecting a lightweight frame, <laughs> 128 grams, uh, that isn't even offensive, but in this day and age that is a heavy frame. And again, they even sell heavier frames than this one and lighter frames if uh, you want to build a lightweight quadcopter. So let's add a battery strap, 132, and maybe a battery pad as well, 140 grams like this. But again, the bare frame with the... Um, 
most, yeah, most of the screws is uh, 127 grams. So that makes this a, well, it's a freestyle quadcopter, right? Or it will be a freestyle quadcopter. It's a freestyle frame. And this is a, a above average weight, I'd say. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this weight. Yeah, I'm, this is uh, what I was expecting basically. So uh, yeah, again, have a look at their site, at their other offerings if you want a heavier. Well, most people won't be, <laughs> want a heavier one, but uh, maybe you want a lighter frame. Okay, I just checked their site and turns out I misspoke a little. This is their heaviest version. There's also one uh, just above 100 grams, which is probably average for a freestyle frame. And there's one uh, very light one, just above 50 grams or maybe even below. Again, check out the site. Uh, well, actually 46 grams, super lightweight, right for a five inch quadcopter. So again, this is their tank version, which is appropriate because I'll name this project Flying Tank. <laughs> yeah, this quadcopter should be very crash resistant. And uh, yeah, so I am impressed with the build quality of their frames. Uh, again, there are zero tolerances in this, this frame. And the look of this frame, uh, again, it's a pretty typical freestyle five inch frame, but there's some shape to the top plate over here. Maybe they also did that to uh, lighten up the top plate and the other plates, but it, it makes for a distinctive look of this frame, I'd say. Oh, one more thing. It did come with a lot of uh, screws, and as you can tell, I've got a lot of screws left still. These over here are actually for your motor. See, with the six millimeter arms, most, or if not all, motors won't come with screws that are long enough. Hence, they give you these screws, which will be long enough. Right, and one other thing, there's no TPU parts with this frame. So for instance, for your VTX antenna or, well, um, antenna tubes, receiver antenna tubes and such, they do offer them and I'll add, add a link to their uh, TPU parts, uh, but they are optional. So you don't get anything. You don't get a camera mount for instance, but uh, those are all optional parts. And again, uh, look what you will need and uh, add that uh, to your offer. I'll be printing out a VTX antenna mount myself. So the next video in this series will be a, an overview of this project, a quick overview of the parts I'll be using and I'll do a, a flight test in that video as well. So that'll be coming up. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the frame and of the brand. Have you ever heard of the brand and what are your impressions so far? And uh, I'll also include a link to my, this project to the playlist for this project in the comment section below in case you are interested. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.